everybody, welcome back, Leo Pazzo, that's the channel, you know what it is, thanks for tuning in guys, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe now, and if you have subscribed, thank you very much for all my new subscribers, guys, thank you very much, I've reached 2,500 subscribers and still climbing, and that's thanks to you guys right there, so thank you very much, I appreciate it guys, so like I said, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead right now. Today's video is going to be of the Coral Reef documentary from my 75 gallon tank when I first started in 2011 to today's date 2015 on my 125 gallon tank where I've transferred all my livestock from my 75 gallon tank to my 125 gallon tank. And in these videos I'd like to share with you my experience along with a few tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. So definitely stay tuned, enjoy the video and hopefully you learn something along the way as well. A few of the topics we're going to be hitting in this video will include the initial setup of the tank and give you a little bit of history about that. We'll be looking into the sump filtration system, the sump tank. We'll also be looking at the uh, equipment such as a protein skimmer. We'll also be adding an additional frag tank to the system, the 75 gallon, which will be quite interesting. And along with an auto top off to replace any evaporated water that is evaporated daily, it will automatically fill up the tank via the sump. So stay tuned with that guys and we'll break it down for you and to show you a few things. So uh, hope you guys enjoy. All right, so let's get started and let's recap what we covered in episode number one. In episode number one, we basically covered the basics. We went over that it was a 75 gallon tank. It was my very first tank. I bought it off someone that was within the hobby off for a local buy and sell. And then from there, I learned from my buddy on how to set it up with my return pump and the plumbing and the sump and everything. I had no clue, but definitely with the help of a friend, I was able to get the tank set up and running. So it's definitely very important to have someone else, a friend in the hobby, uh, or do your research that will be able to help you get started. It's very important if you have any questions to ask someone that's within the hobby on what they think or their experiences. So now that we had the tank up and running with the help of a friend, we were able to go to the local fish store and buy approximately 75 pounds of live rock. I went with 75 pounds of live rock as that's how many gallons my tank is. Plus I have an additional 20 gallon sump which will hold another 10 gallons of water roughly. So in total I would need give or take 85, 90 pounds and that ballpark should be okay. As the rule of thumb says. For each gallon of water you would like a pound to a pound a half of live rock. When looking for this live rock I wanted to find rock that actually had some color on it maybe some purples and not really so much green as I thought green was really kind of like algae looking color so I was looking for some rock with some neat shapes and sizes where I was able to put some corals in and as well that looked like it had some life to it. One thing to keep in mind when you're placing your live rock and doing your aquascaping, I suggest placing your live rock first before placing any live sand or crushed coral as a sand bed. As if you were to put the sand bed first and then put your live rock on top of that, if you ever get any fish or any other uh, creatures or whatnot in your tank that would possibly remove that sand from underneath the rock, you could have your rocks collapse and break your tank. So that's just an extra precaution that I wanted to shout out to you guys. Another thing to keep in mind when placing your live rock and doing your aquascaping is to try your best and not leave as many dead spots as possible. So therefore what that means is you're going to have flow in your tank, water movement, and what you don't want to do is create any dead spots where there is no water movement. Uh, for an example, behind the rocks, behind the back piece of glass or whatnot. You really want to be able to import and export uh, the water and nutrients and food and waste uh, along through the fish tank, up through the filter, through the sump, and then back into the tank again. All right, moving right along here. I wanted to point out that these three condi anemones here, I just recently placed these guys into my tank and if you watch part one, you can see how I briefly acclimated them to the tank via a plastic tray that had holes in it, which I attached a piece of styrofoam along the top so it floated to, along the top of my tank. 
and then in that plastic tray I put in a small piece of uh, rubble live rock so hoping that the anemone would be able to mount onto that piece of live rock before placing it into my tank. That's something that I've learned along the way uh, within the hobby that I wanted to point out to you. Sometimes when you get a new anemone you put it into your tank it's not really mounted onto anything when you buy it from the store so when you put it into your tank you're just basically putting it anywhere that you would want it to stay uh, as best as you can but sometimes that doesn't always work it moves around and it goes wherever it wants to go so ideally what I find that works for me is when I'm acclimating to the tank it might take a couple of days or whatnot but uh, you just basically got to try trial and error if not don't worry about it what I do is I just place a small piece of, of rubble live rock along with the anemone in a small basket that's floating along into the, the tanks so as it's getting used to the water parameters it can find uh, this piece of rubble live rock that I provided with it so hopefully it would mount onto that piece of live rock within the few days that I you know buy the anemone from the store and then from there I would be able to place that piece of live rock that has the anemone onto it in a specific spot into my tank and again just because you know I placed it in that specific spot not to say that it's not going to move but this is what I found that helps and works out best for me to control where you, ideally the anemone is placed in your tank. Okay, so what I wanted to point out next here is that I have at the bottom of my tank here, it's a coral and it's called a toadstool coral. This toadstool coral I bought approximately a month or two ago and I placed it in my tank. It was mounted on a piece of live rock and it was just one toadstool coral. You can see that I have one in the middle, one on the left and one on the right. It's that beige circle looking thing like a mushroom with the tentacles on it. So I bought this coral, it was basically just the one uh, piece of coral, the toadstool on that piece of live rock. I noticed that it split apart as it reproduced and then I split those pieces of coral up. Instead of it just being in one location of my tank, I moved it towards the right side and I moved it towards the left side. So now I have three pieces of those corals scattered along my tank. And I want to show you here in this next clip, which a few months later, now those three again multiplied again. So you can see that the, the one on the right is now two. The one in the middle is now another two and on the one on the left is another two which looks like it's going to be splitting again so you can see there just within a few months time we have some coral growth what do we have here well this is where we're moving quite along here in the aquarium hobby like i said this is a do-it-yourself hobby and it gets your mind thinking and this is what i came up with this is a frag tank this frag tank is some glass some spare glass that i had uh, sitting around at my house and basically what I did is I cut it to size with the tile cutter and I siliconed it together. Uh, I used aquarium safe silicone and then from there um, I just let it sit for a week or so just dry, let the silicone dry. I drilled out the holes on the left and the right hand side of the tank. The left hand side of the tank right here you can see is a one inch hole and I connected a bulkhead which is draining the water down and it's going down into my sump filtration which is my 75 gallon sump. And on the right hand side here, this is where the water is getting pushed inside the frag tank via a pump that's sitting inside my sump. And again, this is a half inch hole drilled here from a half inch hole return line and I just use hose, some regular hose fittings and some clamps that go along down into my sump. Well here you go, I haven't really had much footage of my sump in these videos and here's the limited footage that I have for you guys. So you can see here that the two pumps, one's running and pushing my 75 gallon and which is cycling my 75 gallon and this other hose right there with the black valve on it, that one right there, is running behind my tank over to my frag tank. So what's happening here is I have two pumps in my sump at the bottom of my tank and it's running two systems. The one on my right which is my 75 gallon and the one on my left which is my approximately 30 gallon frag tank. Well guys this is basically a visual on how my other 75 gallon system works. It has two holes drilled at the bottom of the tank and then one is for a drain which drains down here into my sump. You can see that the two hoses that I have here that one there that I'm touching is the hose coming from the frag tank which is the drain and then this one right here is coming from my 75 gallon which is right above right there which is buried behind this overflow box this is why you don't see the plumbing we'll touch more on the plumbing and how it works a little bit later on in some upcoming episodes but for now we can take a brief look at my sump filtration system which is divided up into three chambers approximately starting on the left is the drain and on the right is the finished product water which the pump pushes the water up to my two tanks which is the 75 gallon tank and my frag tank here. 
One of the tests I had to perform here when setting up my frag tank, I had to make sure that when the power was shut off at any given time, that the back siphon that was siphoned back into the sump filtration system, that it didn't overflow the sump. So what I had to do is I had to turn off all the equipment and the uh, pump for my 75 gallon, and at the same time turn off the pump and all the equipment for my 30 gallon frag tank. And then from there I monitored my sump filtration system as the water level rised and then from there I would know that it would be safe that if a power were to shut off that uh, it would not overflow into my sump filtration system. Well you might be asking yourself why did I build this frag tank? This frag tank was basically just a project that I wanted to experiment with and I wanted to try being new into the hobby. The hobby got my mind thinking by watching some videos on YouTube and then from there I just decided that I wanted to add a frag tank to my system and again tie it all in together so it's all one system and all the same water levels throughout. And again, I wanted to take some of the corals that were growing in my 75 gallon main display tank and I wanted to frag them out and glue them on some uh, frag pieces and frag discs and see how they would recuperate and heal and grow in my frag tank under different lighting which I was using T5 lighting comparison to my 75 gallon where I was using metal halides and T5s. You might be looking at this bucket right here and asking yourself what's this bucket and this quarter inch line that's running down in towards my sump. Well that's what we're going to be talking about in this next video. We're going to be talking about the auto top off. Auto top off also known as ATO which basically is a system that will allow you to replace evaporated water that's evaporated daily into your sump filtration system which is constantly doing this all the time. So as your water consistently evaporates from your system this auto top off will consistently drip water into your tank into your system will keep your water levels always at the same level. The auto top off is a very important piece of equipment as it will make your life much easier. One thing, it will keep your levels in your sump at the consistent level all the time once you have it set, which in return will help your skimmer perform at its best. For an example, if your skimmer is recommended to be run at 9 inches for an example, your auto top off will maintain that level in your sump which will allow your skimmer to work at its best performance. Another peak and benefit that the auto top off has is that you don't need to manually replace water yourself daily or every other day or weekly and will also help in your salinity level, your salt level to be more consistent as as much as the water evaporates the water will be dripping into the system here. Another benefit having an auto top off would be would be the reassurance of your sump pump that's in your sump filtration system for it to not run dry. For an example, if you're busy for a few days and don't get a chance to top off your sump filtration system, what's going to happen is your sump pump chamber is the chamber that's going to lower and then from there eventually it will run dry which will possibly cause damage to your return pump and not work at all. So it gives you the reassurance that your return pump will not run dry and will not break down on you. So again guys the auto top off is very important and this mechanism that I have right here in this design of the auto top off is called a gravity feed auto top off. What I have done here is I've installed by easily hot glue gunning um, a float valve which is from a dehumidifier. This float valve is from a dehumidifier float valve and which takes a quarter inch drip line at the back <clears throat> and I ran it behind the tank which is elevated higher than the sump into this bucket. This is just a five gallon salt bucket which I drilled the hole at the bottom of it. I siliconed a, a fitting on there which will, me, will allow me to connect a quarter inch uh, tubing line and then from there I ran that over to behind my tank into my sump which was ran into that float valve. That float valve will drip water inside my sump via gravity and then from there once it reaches the desired height that I set it at it will stop. So for you to design one of these gravity auto top offs all you need to do is just grab a bucket reservoir uh, Rubbermaid container make sure that it's elevated higher than your sump drill a hole in it silicone the, an adapter or a valve that you'll be able to connect the quarter inch line tubing to and then from there just run it into your sump if you need to you got to drill a hole into your sump along the side wall and connect the float valve there 
and uh, you'll see that on my uh, newer tank here on my 125 gallon as we get there in the later episodes and how I drilled that. If you look closely here into the sump at the float valve, the black float valve, behind it you'll see a few drips dripping behind it and this is how the automatic auto top off fills up my sump filtration system which will allow my sump filtration level be at the desired level at all times. And this float valve here can be adjusted so if you need it to be raised up higher or lower that can be done. And I put a piece of styrofoam twist tied to that float valve just to reassure myself that it will float once the water does hit it. Well guys that looks like a wrap for the uh, 75 gallon to 125 gallon coral reef documentary that's season 1 episode 2. Thanks very much for watching guys I hope you guys learned a few things here along the way. Again we talked about briefly about some filtration systems, we talked about live rock, we talked about the build of the frag tank and some things to double check such as when the power goes off uh, there's no, there's not too much back siphon into your sump. Uh, we also talked about the auto top off and how to set them up and just briefly uh, design on what I'm using here which is a gravity fed auto top off for my 75 gallon tank and which is tied into my 30 gallon frag tank as well so guys thanks very much for watching you know what it is Leo Potzel that's the channel if you guys haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe right now share the video definitely take a look at all my other videos as well if you guys are new to the channel go ahead feel free let me know what you guys think leave a comment and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. So definitely stay tuned for the next upcoming video. Season 1, Episode 3 of the Coral Reef documentary for my 75 gallon to my 125 gallon. We'll be covering more topics such as plumbing, sump filtration, equipment such as protein skimmer and lighting, and overall maintenance along with the tank. So definitely stay tuned guys. And uh, thanks again very much for watching. Till next time.